The unthinkables happened. We are scientists, engineers, and statisticians. A crew that became a family. And as of this moment, victims of totally unwarranted wormhole aggression. One minute, standard research vessel existence. The next, a kaleidoscope death tunnel of prismatic energy and destruction. Most of the crew, including the captain, are dead, and critical systems are critically damaged. Scans show us to be in uncharted space with no points of reference on any horizon. We're lost, utterly beyond help. But whether we're beyond hope is up, up to us. us. Unsettled is a series of survival puzzles set in the bizarre and wondrous depths of the cosmos. Each play represents your crew's visit to a strange world with its own environment, special rules, and challenges to overcome. It's a collaborative experience, all players working against the game, where you succeed, stay alive, or fail, the other thing, together. Space is hard. Try not to die. The Unsettled System has two primary components. The base framework that you set up and use every time you play. And then you choose which planet you want to explore. Each planet bends the rules in different ways, which creates a very unique experience every time you're playing the game. Let's go ahead and set up the base framework. Let's start with the game trays. We've got four nested trays that hold the primary boards for the game. On top here, we have the time and trust board. Then we've got the moment board. On the other side of the table, we're going to place the breakthrough board and also the resource board. If it's your very first time playing, you're gonna have to punch out and place the components that you see here. But once you've done that, these are gonna be their storage positions when you take the game down each time. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the player dashboards. So you pick your color, I'm gonna pick purple, Jared, you are green. Let's look at what goes on to these now. Each player is gonna place an endurance marker, that's one of the clear cubes, in the topmost space of their endurance track. Then we're gonna grab a scientific pursuit cube. That's the small black cube with engraved science icons. It's gonna be placed in the bottom space of the insight track. Now these cubes denote the discipline of science the explorer is pursuing. It's best to diversify these among the group, but they're gonna shift throughout the game, so choose whatever. Now you're going to get your three focus cubes, one of each awareness, wonder, and energy. They're gonna be placed near the dashboard with the two pip icon oriented upward. Now we're gonna move on to your personality trait tiles. Each player or explorer is gonna grab two unique trait tiles, select one, and then place it white side up on their dashboard, covering the action space with the same action name. The unchosen tiles are returned to the box. Finally, you can select and place any of the available avatars, that's the chits with the faces, to identify your character with. Choose carefully, yours is probably the last face your crew will see as they slip into unconsciousness. Place one of the scarab tiles at the center of the table. For now, use a side that is just illustration. Each of the scarab tiles has an extra ability on its back to make the playing experience easier. For your first game, we recommend playing without a scarab ability. Use those to modulate the difficulty if you find yourself losing often. Next, place Luna and each explorer's miniature on the scarab tile. For your first play, we recommend Winora. So grab that planet box, open it up, and let's start exploring. Let's put our attention to the resource board. Shuffle and place the environment and planet-specific cards in their spaces beneath the board. For Winora, the planet-specific cards are hallucination cards. Some planets have multiple planet-specific card types, stack them separately. Now let's move our attention to the breakthrough board. Place any planet-specific tokens from the planet box in the designated space. Now you're gonna grab Luna's primary function card. After that, we're going to shuffle and place the anomaly and breakthrough cards in their spaces beneath the board. The breakthrough cards should be separated and placed by type. After that, we're going to place the distress, three per explorer, in their space beneath the board. The excess will remain in the planet box. Now let's move our attention to the moment board. Place the 12 discovery tokens from the planet box into the quick ready display. Shuffle and place the opportunity cards in roughly equal piles in each of the two spaces below the board. Now let's look at the group trust and time board. Choose one of the three survival tasks to play. For your first game, select task A. Each task typically has four double-sided cards differentiated by a colored stripe and a unique title. Stack the cards in order so they progress like a book with page one on top. Once you've completed your basic setup, read through your chosen planet's booklet. Each planet will introduce some new mechanical twists, and many will have unique additions to the setup. Next, read your survival task's opening narrative. Then, advance one step through the task to reveal any final setup instructions unique to the task.
Your first objective is now revealed on the card on the right, and you are ready to begin. So, we've got all this set up. What's next? Now you try not to die, okay? <laughs> uh, your goal is to complete the survival task and get everyone and Luna back to the Scarab before your endurance runs out. Seems easy enough, doesn't it? All right, so now let's go ahead and take a little zoom in at each of the boards so we can get to know them better. This is the time and trust board. It's where you track group trust and time. When you consume an entire cycle of time, everyone loses one endurance. Sometimes trigger tokens are added to the timeline to mark when planet-specific effects occur. At the top of the board is where you track trust. It goes up and down throughout the game, which has different effects. This is the moment board. As you investigate the planet, you'll reveal opportunity cards. These are unique encounters that typically yield wondrous discoveries. Opportunity cards and discovery tokens live right here on this board. The opportunity markers are placed onto the map to indicate where those opportunities exist once they are revealed. And the white investigation chits are used to mark when a node has been investigated. Now we're looking at the resource board. Resources in Unsettled, including data, materials, and power, are shared by all explorers. This board contains each resource's supply, the action used to gain each, and the shared storage of resources gained. Beneath this board are the environment cards that have not yet been revealed, and any unique card types associated with your current planet. Here's the breakthrough board. This board holds the things you can unlock or build to gain personal abilities, one-time use abilities, and group abilities. It also stores any unique tokens for the planet you're exploring, Luna's current special ability, and the unique distress cards the planet can inflict upon you. Yeah. The map is comprised of environment cards. Each represents a unique location and affords special actions and effects. As you move your figures from node to node, symbols on node edges indicate effects that transpire. Play often starts with few or no nodes revealed, and they're revealed as you explore. These six black and white squares with little arrows in them are action spaces, and you'll find those all throughout the game. Each turn, you'll place all three of your focus blocks onto action spaces, increasing or decreasing their value according to those little arrows. Action spaces, again, are available all over with many coming and going throughout the game, but those on your dashboard are always available to you, unless they get covered by distress. Your personality tile covers and tweaks one of your six personal action spaces. As group trust changes, your trait tile flips to affect different actions. Now, let's move on to your avatar. That's you up there. Your miniature represents your location in the world, but this token reminds you who you are under the helmet. Sometimes it's used for various planet-specific purposes, but otherwise it remains here as a representation of your wonderful face. Now, let's look over at the endurance track. Circumstances in the game are constantly taking their toll. As time ticks by, you'll slowly, but not as slowly as you'd like, lose endurance. If your endurance marker reaches the pink bottom space of your endurance track, you become unconscious. If everyone is unconscious, you lose. What about insight and comprehension? While many actions and effects grant you insight, moving your insight marker up its track. When it advances off the track, you gain comprehension and a breakthrough of whatever scientific discipline you were pursuing. Then you reset the marker to pursue a new discipline, if that's what you choose. Gained as you play, breakthroughs, discoveries, and their anomalies provide additional personal abilities. Unlike your six focus action spaces, however, these can be used as free actions at any time during anyone's turn. So, now that you've seen everything, how does it work? What do you do on your turn? Well, you have the option to move yourself and or Luna, and then you're gonna be setting your focus dice on different action spaces throughout the game, knowing that one of them is gonna to need to be put on rest. And when you rest, that's gonna move time forward one, and then at the end of your turn, you're gonna regroup your focus. Focus is your primary resource used to take actions. You have three types of focus, awareness, wonder, and energy. Four of the cube faces form a sequence as the cube rotates. Three, two, one, time. The face of the cube that is oriented upward is how much of that focus type you have available. During your turn, you must set all three focus, one of which must be set on your rest action. 
You set your focus by placing them on available action spaces. Rotating each is indicated by the action space as you set it down. Action spaces may increase, decrease, or have no impact on the focus when you take that action. That's indicated by up or down arrows on the action space or a lack thereof. Listen, there are many action spaces throughout the game. Page 15 goes into detail on the most common ones. Right now, we're gonna take a closer look at the six that are on your dashboard. These action spaces are always available to you on your turn unless they are covered by distress. The theorize action grants an insight to any other explorer. Remember, you take the action by placing a focus on the space, rotating it down one as indicated by the single down arrow. Another explorer may then go up one on their insight track. The investigate action reveals an opportunity on your current node. More on this later. The traverse action allows you to take an additional move action and carry another explorer with you as you do so. More on this later. The support action enables another local explorer to remove a distress, which increases group trust. The term local means on your node. Because the support action specifically says another local explorer, you can't support yourself. The recover action fully restores a focus cube, but each time you do this, there is a decrease in trust, so use it sparingly. The rest action is mandatory. You may perform it at any time on your turn, so long as one of your focus rests at some point on your turn. When you rest, that focus increases by one and time advances. Some action spaces like theorize, investigate, and traverse provide bonuses for using a certain type of focus. For example, if you use energy to take the traverse action, you gain one insight in addition to the action's regular effect. More on insight in a moment. In addition to your dashboard, you also have access to various other action spaces, many of which will come and go throughout play. For example, your current node may provide an action space. Survival tasks will provide an action space. The resource and breakthrough boards also provide access to action spaces, all of which we'll cover in depth in a bit. Revealing new action spaces and getting into position to use them is a key piece of the survival puzzle. You must place all three focus each turn. Eventually, your focus will be reduced to zero, which displays a time symbol. Focus displaying the time symbol may still be used to take actions. Place the focus on the desired action space without rotating it and advance time by one. The action then resolves as normal. If ever an effect would cause you to lose focus and you can't because that focus is showing the time symbol, you advance time. For example, if all three of your focus are showing the time symbol and something causes you to lose two focus, you would advance time by two once for each focus loss you were unable to process. In addition to your focus actions, there are a number of free actions available to you, which are summarized on your cheat sheet. Free actions may be performed by anyone at any time. Free actions resolve immediately and may interrupt other effects. So. Quick recap of what you do on your turn. On your turn, in whatever order you'd like, you must perform three focus actions, one being rest. You may move yourself, which we'll talk about later. You may move Luna, which we'll talk about later. And you may perform as many free actions as you'd like. You may do all these things in whatever order you wish. Then announce the end of your turn by regrouping your focus back to a space near your dashboard. All right, so let's talk about insight. So many of the actions that you perform as you explore the planet are going to increase your insight, and insight leads to comprehensions, and comprehensions unlock powerful scientific breakthrough abilities. This is the insight icon. Anytime you take an action or benefit from an effect that has the insight icon, you gain an insight and advance your scientific pursuit cube a space up the insight track. When you advance off the top of the track, you gain a comprehension and a breakthrough matching the scientific discipline you were pursuing. It's indicated by the icon facing upward on your pursuit die. Place the comprehension on the right side of your dashboard and the breakthrough in the space indicated to the left of your dashboard. Then reset the pursuit cube to the bottom of the track, setting the upward face to whatever pursuit you want of the three that are available. Congratulations, you now have one chemistry comprehension. Comprehension represents your increasing understanding of the world's scientific uniqueness. Having comprehension makes some actions more efficient and grants access to advanced actions. 
comprehension is never spent. It is simply a prerequisite for actions. For example, the build workshop action requires you either advance the time marker or have engineering comprehension present. This action, meanwhile, can only be performed if you have two engineering comprehension present. Comprehension pools between explorers when they're together. You may not have the comprehension required to perform a certain action, but if someone with you does, you can take advantage of their knowledge. For example, this green explorer has two engineering comprehension. This means two engineering comprehension is present on the node, and any explorer on this node may take actions that require two engineering comprehension, even if they personally don't possess it on their board. So this purple explorer could perform the action using the green explorer's comprehension. Each time you gain a comprehension, you also gain a breakthrough of that scientific discipline. Breakthroughs are unique abilities that you may perform as free actions, meaning you may use them at any time on anyone's turn. Free actions interrupt other game effects. This means you can use a free action to pause whatever's happening in the game and sneak in a helpful effect. To use a breakthrough, pay the required resource and then resolve its effect. For example, this explorer's focus are totally depleted. When they gain this distress, they must lose one focus. Because they have no focus to lose, they will have to advance time. When this distress is revealed, the explorer could interrupt that effect by using their breakthrough to really quickly gain two focus before resolving the loss of one. They pay a power to use the breakthrough which gains them two focus. Play then unpauses and the distress resolves, causing them to lose a focus. However, by using their breakthrough, they prevented the loss of time. Each breakthrough may only be used once per turn. Using your breakthroughs to assist other explorers on their turns and finding ways to chain breakthrough abilities will be key to your survival. So, uh, you, uh, you like to build stuff? Of course I do. Who doesn't? All right, let's, uh, let's talk about structures. Great. Structures, comprehension, and breakthroughs are found on the breakthrough board, arranged by the three scientific disciplines in Unsettled, Robotics, Chemistry, and Engineering. It's good to diversify the types of comprehension and breakthroughs you're gaining so you have a use for each of the planet's three main resources. We'll talk more about that later. In addition to breakthroughs, each discipline has a unique modular facility that you may construct on eligible locations in the environment. These structures provide free action abilities that use the same resources as the breakthroughs. They also factor into many survival tasks or other objectives. To construct a structure, you must be on a node with an empty build site. Use a focus to take the build action on the structure you wish to construct. If you don't have comprehension of that structure's type present, you must advance the time by one. Place the structure and your focus onto the build site when you regroup your focus at the end of your turn, flip the structure. It and its free action are now available for use. Free actions on science structures may be performed from anywhere once a structure is built. You don't have to be on the same node as the structure. And these actions can be performed repeatedly, so as long as you can afford them, go ahead, spam them, they're wonderful. Some action spaces require that you be at a specific structure. If you're on a node where the structure's been built, you've met this requirement. Some planets will have unique structures that have unique rules. See that planet's booklet for details on their use. <laughs> Lacey, Lacey, what's going on? I'm distressed. Well, uh, what do you want me to do? Maybe the support action. Oh, I don't know how to do that. Fine, I will teach you. Okay. Each planet has a system of effects that will cause you to cover your action spaces on your dashboard with distress cards. Until removed, a distress card nullifies your ability to take the covered action. This is the gain distress icon. Any time an effect causes you to gain a distress, draw a distress card and cover any personal action space on your dashboard other than rest. The effects of the distress apply immediately. You can manage your distress at any time by reducing a focus by one and moving the distress to another action space. If distress and your personality tile ever occupy the same action space, the distress will always cover the personality tile. Distress remains until it's removed by an effect. You begin the game with a draw pile of three distress per player. If ever an explorer would gain a six distress, but can't place it because all their spaces are covered, all explorers lose one endurance. If ever an explorer would gain a distress, but the deck is empty, all explorers lose one endurance. Now this is the remove distress icon. 
It's most easily available on the support action on your dashboard, which allows an explorer to remove distress from another explorer on their node. When distress is removed, it returns to the bottom of the distress draw pile. Okay, so we've talked about our actions and our dashboards, but I'm feeling kind of stuck. Well, that's because we haven't talked about movement at all yet. Should we talk about that now? Yeah, we probably movement. should. Yeah. Let's talk about movement. Each planet's map is comprised of large environment cards. Sometimes these are revealed by exploration. Other times they start in predetermined setups. Each planet's different and that planet's booklet will guide you through those details during setup. Movement is straightforward. Move your explorer to a neighboring node and resolve any effects incurred by that movement. That's it. The rulebook has a lot of hyper-specific rules should you encounter oddities, but most of the time it's that simple. Move to an adjacent node, resolve effects. There are two primary effects that movement can trigger, node edge effects and entering effects. If your movement passes over any node edge symbols, you resolve those effects immediately. In this instance, moving between these two nodes would advance the time marker two spaces. Some nodes have when entering effects. Resolve these effects immediately upon moving onto a node. Movement is optional and may be done at any point on your turn. Often you'll perform actions both before and after your movement to optimize your stuff doing. The traverse action on your dashboard allows you to take an additional movement. It also allows you to carry another explorer with you on that move. When you are carrying another explorer, you still only resolve node edge symbols once, but both you and the carried explorer are subject to entering effects. Most map setups place the environment cards in a stack beneath the resource board or face down in a predetermined formation. If the environment cards are stacked beneath the resource board, you may reveal these cards and add them to the map by exploring off the edge of a revealed node. To reveal new nodes, for your movement, point at an empty space adjacent to your current node where you intend to move. Reveal the top environment card from the stack and place it in that place. Place it with the same orientation as the scarab. Then place your explorer onto the newly revealed node, resolving all node edge symbols and entering effects. If your setup features environment cards face down in a specific formation, simply flip each card face up as you move onto them. When flipping them, keep their current orientation and then resolve any node edge and entering effects as usual. Right now, you might be thinking this all seems a bit scary. Wandering blindly into unknown weirdness of alien worlds? Good instincts, it is. Thankfully, you're not alone in this journey. Your adorable yet ferocious research bot Luna is along to lend a hand. Or other robotic appendage. Luna acts as a sort of extra body or pet that's shared by all explorers. At any time on your turn, you may move Luna once and you may reveal resources on her node. Luna moves just like explorers. Move her miniature from her current node to an adjacent one. Unlike explorers though, Luna ignores node edge symbols and entering effects. This makes her great for exploring unrevealed nodes as she's immune to the potentially hazardous effects that may be present. Once per turn, Luna may also scan her current node for resources that aren't currently revealed on that node. To scan for data or materials, choose what Luna is going to scan for, in this case, data, and roll the corresponding eight-sided discovery die. Place the resulting amount of that resource from the supply directly onto the node. These resources are now available to be gathered using the Analyze Data and Unearth Materials actions, but we'll talk more about that later. Luna makes herself useful in other ways, too. Many robotics breakthroughs are performed by Luna on her node. For example, when an explorer uses this robotics breakthrough, Luna grants two insight to any explorer on her node. Using robotics breakthroughs allows explorers to use Luna to interact with parts of the map that are far away from their current position. Some action spaces require Luna to be present, like this one. Like comprehension, Luna acts as a prerequisite that allows an explorer to take an action. Finally, Luna begins each planet with a primary function card on the breakthrough board. This is a special action available for you to use on your turn and, like robotics breakthroughs, is typically something that Luna performs on her node, but that you can initiate from anywhere. With Luna revealing resources all over, it's important to know how to get your hands on them. <laughs> there are three primary resources, data, materials, and power. Each has a supply on the resource board. Gained resources are shared by the whole team. When resources are gained, they are placed in the database, stockpile, and charged power portions of the resource board, where all explorers have access to spend them. 
Each resource is primarily gained using a dedicated focus action space on the resource board. Each of these actions behave a little differently. Data is gained from map nodes by Luna using the Analyze Data action. If data is available on Luna's node, typically because Luna revealed it, use the Analyze Data action to have Luna collect one data from her node. Materials are gained from map nodes by you using the Unearth Materials action. If material is available on your node, use the Unearth Materials action to collect one material from your current node. Unlike data and materials, power can be gained from anywhere and doesn't need to be revealed in any way. Use the Charge Power action, regardless of your location, to move power from the uncharged lower half of the dynamo to the charged upper half. Each of these action spaces has a bonus if you use a certain focus type. These bonuses grant you a second resource from the same source as the first. For example, if you use your Wonder Focus to unearth materials, you may gain two materials from your current node instead of one. Some card effects will also cause you to gain resources. Anytime you resolve these icons, gain the resource directly from the supply. Many actions and various other effects will require you to spend or lose resources. When this happens, move the resources from the database, stockpile, or charged power portion of the dynamo back to their supply. Data, materials, and power are not the only resources available to you, however. Each planet also offers a strange assortment of unique discoveries to track down. In order to acquire most discoveries, you will need to reveal opportunities and then take advantage of them in the moment. Opportunities are unique encounters that provide new action spaces on the map. These actions usually result in you gaining a discovery token. Opportunities are revealed when you use the Investigate action on your dashboard. When you take the Investigate action, place an Investigated token on your node to indicate that this node may not be investigated again. Each node may only be investigated once. Place an available moment marker on your node to indicate where the opportunity exists. Flip over the top card on the opportunity stack associated with the moment marker you just placed. Read the opportunity aloud and resolve any effects in the left column. Anytime resources or other components are depicted with a dotted outline, they are placed there immediately. This opportunity now exists in the moment. Any explorer on the node with that moment marker may act on that opportunity on their turn. In other words, this action space now exists on this node. Opportunities remain in the moment until they are completed or forfeited. When you complete an opportunity by taking its focus action, you immediately resolve its effects. Your focus then remains on the opportunity until you regroup at the end of your turn. At that time, the opportunity is considered complete. Discard the Opportunity card and return the Moment Marker to the Moment Board. There may only be two active opportunities at a time. If for whatever reason you wish to let an opportunity pass you by, you may choose to forfeit the opportunity. Remove the Opportunity card from play and return the Moment Marker to the Moment Board. Occasionally, some cards may engage you, locking some effect onto you until they're resolved. In the case of opportunities, this means the moment marker moves with you when you move. If an opportunity engages you, place the card near your dashboard, paying attention to any ongoing effects. Place your miniature onto the moment marker. If you move, move the moment as well. Many engaged opportunities can only be acted on by non-engaged explorers, meaning you will need to get to your crewmate and rescue them from whatever strangeness that has befallen them. Most opportunities grant a discovery when completed. Discoveries are items and creatures that can be leveraged for their scientific properties and special abilities. When you gain a discovery, claim the discovery from the opportunity card. Draw an anomaly card from beneath the breakthrough board and place it to the left of your dashboard. Place the discovery token onto the anomaly card. Each discovery may be consumed as a free action to take advantage of its bizarre anomaly, triggering that anomaly's discard effect. Discoveryos, three times your daily recommended value of science. To consume a discovery, this is what you have to do. The required comprehension must be present on your node. Resolve the discard effect on the anomaly, discard the anomaly and the discovery token. In addition to their discard effect, each anomaly typically provides a scientific property. Scientific properties are the strange, alienish things that you take on to yourself as you explore and mess with stuff. You might become host to a parasite, become magnetic, or start to glow a lot. 
These properties are indicated by a gold-colored badge. If you possess a component on or beside your dashboard that has one of these gold-colored badges, then you possess that property. If you possess a property, you can think of it as being part of you. Properties usually have no inherent effect and do not impact play until they're referenced. Each planet will use properties differently. Sometimes there will be prerequisites for actions. Other times they may dictate the result of an effect. Sometimes you'll need to discard discoveries whose anomaly grants a specific property. Properties can be both a help and a hindrance. Figuring out how to use or avoid the strange elements of each alien world is part of the challenge of survival. All right, so now let's talk about time and how you're gonna waste it until it's too late. And also trust, that's important. Let's look at the time and trust board. At the top of this board is the trust track. You are each other's greatest resource and sometimes greatest liability. How you respond to your circumstances will influence the cohesion of your group, causing group trust to ebb and flow. Group trust exists in a high or low state. This is the decreased trust icon. When an effect causes group trust to decrease, slide the marker to low trust. All explorers flip their trait tiles to the black side and place them over the proper action spaces. If trust is decreased when it's already low, the marker stays where it is. You can imagine it bouncing off the edge if a visual helps you. When this happens, you distribute minus two focus amongst the crew. This is the increased trust icon. When an effect causes group trust to increase, slide the marker to high trust. All explorers then flip their trait tiles to the white side and place them over the proper action spaces. If trust increases when it is already high, distribute a gain of two focus amongst the crew. Beneath the trust tracker is the timeline. Time is a resource as well as a potential threat and it must be managed wisely. This is the advanced time symbol. When an effect causes time to advance, move the time marker one space on the timeline for each symbol resolved. When the marker advances off the right side of the timeline, it wraps back around to the first space and each explorer loses one endurance. Many things can cause time to advance. Time symbols on node edges, actions with a time cost, performing a focus action with a depleted focus, and any other effect that includes the time symbol. All cause time to march forward, slowly reducing your endurance. Your instinct is gonna to be to control time as much as possible, and while there's some wisdom there, it can be a mistake to try to avoid time consumption altogether. Many planets and survival tasks introduce trigger tokens to the timeline. These markers represent an effect that transpires when the time marker moves onto their place on the timeline. Your planet's booklet and survival task will instruct when and how these should be used. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to talk about endurance, survival, and death. Let's take it to the finger close-ups. You survive if you complete your survival task and get back to the scarab before you run out of endurance. We've talked about a number of ways you can lose endurance. When the time marker completes a trip down the timeline, everyone loses an endurance. Ah! If someone needs to draw or place a distress but cannot, everyone loses an endurance. Ah! Endurance will get gobbled up in other ways as well. If your endurance marker ever reaches the bottom, the scariest pink space of your endurance track, you become unconscious. You may not perform any additional actions, so dramatically knock your miniature onto its side. If all explorers are unconscious, you have failed to survive. You're dead, dude. Don't let that happen. Instead, succeed. Complete your survival task and get everyone safely back to the scarab in time. Beneath the time and trust board is your survival task. Each time you play Unsettled, you will select one of your chosen planet's survival tasks. Each task represents a unique story of visiting that world and a puzzle that must be solved. They may be played in any order and are each designed to stand alone narratively, as if the other survival tasks don't exist. During setup, you will have arranged your task cards in a stack, with card one of eight on top. As the final act of setup, read the title and introductory narrative of the survival task aloud, and then flip this card onto its face to the left, similar to flipping through the pages of a book. Card 2 features any unique setup instructions for that task, and card 3, which should now be revealed on the right, features your first objective. Italicized text is narrative and should be read dramatically. dramatically. The colored bars indicate what must be done to advance to the next portion of the task. Once the conditions indicated have been met, advance to the next card. Typically, as you advance through a task, the cards on the left will include narrative and effects, while the cards on the right will provide your current objective. 
Continue to work your way through the stack until you reach the final card. The last objective of every survival task is to get the entire crew to the Scarab. The instant all explorers and Luna reach the Scarab, you win at not dying. Yay! So proud of you. Each survival task is unique and will need to be read carefully. Do whatever the cards say. Some objectives will have you arrange a special condition in the world. As soon as that condition is met, the objective is complete. For example, on this card, your objective is to construct all three science structures. The moment you have done so, you advance. Other times, objectives will provide action spaces. Typically, these will require you to arrange certain conditions, gather specific resources, or reach specific locations to be able to perform the action and complete the objective. For example, this objective requires you to gather a bunch of resources in a special way, attain a certain level of comprehension, and be at the laboratory to use the action space. At the end of the turn, you manage to use the space, you advance. If you're ever in doubt as to what you should be doing, refer to the colored bar at the bottom of the cards. Reach the end of your task before everyone's endurance runs out, and you have survived. Yay! The only thing we haven't touched on are some of the cards that are unique to each planet. I'm touching them. It's not what we meant. <laughs> when you open a planet box, if there are types of cards you don't recognize, place them face down in the area beneath the resource board designated for planet-specific cards. If there are more than one unique card type, place them in separate stacks. Remember to read each planet's booklet closely so you understand that planet's unique components. When you're finished playing, Unsettled's tray system is designed to help make it so that cleaning up after this session is setting up for the next one. Return all the resources to the resource tray, the science structures and comprehensions to the breakthrough tray, and the investigated and moment markers to the moment tray. Then, return all the planet-specific components to their planet box. All the small cards and discoveries go in the bottom tray. The unique chits and large cards go in the top tray. Stack the trays together and snap the lid on top, then return it all to the box. The game trays all snap together to keep their components roughly in place, so that when you set up next time, they're right where they need to be. Then refer to the rapid teardown guide on the side of the box. In the base tray, place Luna and your miniatures, focus die, the scarab, endurance and pursuit markers and discovery die, time and trust markers, and the trait tiles. Next are the player dashboards, then of course the planet boxes, followed by the game trays, and topped with the rule book and cheat sheets. Then all that's left is the lid. Magically, everything is back on the board because we would like to show you a sample turn. Yeah, so, setup is not that fast. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, I am purple player here. And I'm green. Okay, it's my turn. Here we go. I am the most interested right now in having a discovery, so I need to investigate for a discovery, but I can't do that on the node that I'm at right now because you can see it's already been investigated. So, we're going to move on to a new node, but I don't want to do that blindly. It's okay. too scary. So let's have Luna move. Can you move her for me and I will bring this Here. new node out? Yes, okay. that's great. Okay, new node, there she is. Okay, it's not too scary to move. There is one time symbol and one insight that I can get from moving over there, so that's what I'm going to choose to do. If you right. move the time, I'm gonna advance up. I've only got one more to get a breakthrough, so that's exciting to me. Awesome. Okay, so if I wanted to do my investigate action with my wonder die, I could do it with any of them, but if I did it with my wonder die, I could get another insight and get that um, breakthrough. Oh, but I mean, at the end of your turn, you're gonna have to rest anyways, and that's gonna spend a time, and so if we used that time as well, it's gonna push us around to the front, and we're gonna lose an endurance. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. So if I if I did that, we would have to expend a time, and I don't wanna do that right now. So how I mean, could I, I have this breakthrough get more focus? And that if I, if I was on your node, I I could uh, shock your cerebral cortex and give you a couple of focus, but I'm but I'm not there. I don't mind that idea. Let's br let's bring you over to me. How can we do that? Um, I know that recently when I did my breakthrough, I got um, this one that's deploy mini tractor beam. <laughs> that sounds useful. Um, Luna pulls an explorer from an adjacent node onto her node, ignoring all node edge symbols. But we need a data to do that, and we don't yeah. have it yet. Dang. So right now there are no resources exposed on this node because it's a brand new node, so um, I can choose to roll for them. So I'm gonna choose data this okay. time to roll for. 
Let's go some big data. Here we go. Big data, here big data. Go. Here we go. Three. Let's yes. go. Okay, so we're gonna take three data and we're gonna put it right on the node here. So then we have to analyze for that data to get it into the shared pool. Again, I could choose any of my focus die to do that, but if I chose my awareness, uh, which I'm going to do, so I'm gonna pip down to one, use my awareness die to analyze the data, so that time I get a bonus. So I don't get to just move one data back into the shared pool, I get to move two. So now we've got right there in the shared pool that we can use and access at any time. Let's deploy the tractor beam, All right, shall let's we? Give it a go. So I'm gonna use one data and I'm gonna deploy that tractor beam. I'm <laughs> just gonna bring you over oh. the top. Oh my god, you do it like this every time I'm to sorry. me. Just fix the table. Okay. So thank you for coming to save me. Yeah, I'm will here you now. please now apply the cerebral cortex shock? Yes, I will. I will expend this power. <laughs> I feel energized. Do so you also feel focused? Let's let's go up. I'm gonna go up to focus now. Okay. I'm gonna move it up from time signal. I'm gonna move my wonder up to two now. <sighs> okay. Now I would like to investigate. I feel my cerebral shock still. <laughs> I feel the tractor beam. I'm I'm a little I'm a little jazzed right now. Let's investigate. I'm gonna pip down to one now. Uh, let's put the investigated token out. Let's put the moment marker out. Um, I got an insight, so I'm gonna get hey. my breakthrough. I get my breakthrough What'd you here, get? and I am in chemistry, so I can apply gooey fungal salve. Um, a local explorer gains one focus and is awesome. immune from distress from spore cloud affects this turn. So that will come in handy later. All right. Okay, what is our discovery? So we've got screaming glow frogs here, and hey, look at that! Immediately, each local explorer gains two focus. This is a good turn. <laughs> I know. We, I didn't even need to slam into you. Okay, <laughs> so let's pip up there. I'm gonna choose to pip up this one too. So now we've both gone up two. I mean, I'd love to get that, but I don't have any more actions I can do. I have to use my last focus to rest. But I can do it. I'll and get on my turn. turn. Okay, so I'm gonna use this, and I'm going to pip up one because I rested, but we're gonna advance one time. All right. And that is the end of my turn. So I'm gonna move my die back in front of my board and I'm all done. Um, Jared's probably gonna get that discovery next, which is exciting. Those glow frogs are mine. <laughs> so um, I hope you enjoyed this sample turn. Um, they're not all quite as exciting as no. this one. It uh, depends on who you're playing with. Um, <laughs> but we hope you learned a lot. Come back, you can see all of our full playthrough videos when they come out. Um, but we hope you learn a lot from this, watch it, study it, and as always, just try not to die. <laughs> but you probably will. <laughs> <laughs>